minutes of continuous easy music favourites with less talk. Melbourne's Easy Music 3MP. My last video got a lot of people excited about what they could do with their bow things. Normally these are FM only radios. However, I showed that if you added a nano VNA operating as a beat frequency oscillator, you could receive CW, SSB and even whisper signals. That was on 2 meters and the results were surprisingly good. Today I'll do something different. I'll show how you can build a little thing, only one transistor and a few other parts, connect it to your bow thing and be listening to AM broadcast band signals. How do you do it? Well, the bow thing is still only an FM receiver. I suppose you could call it reverse slope detection. In the old days especially, if you just had an AM receiver, you could tune off to one side and hear an FM signal. There is a bit of distortion, but it worked. Well, I'll show you how you can do the reverse, using this FM receiver to hear AM signals. In fact, even ones on the AM broadcast band down around 1 MHz that the bow thing doesn't normally cover. The secret is this simple converter, just one transistor and a few other parts. We'll look at the circuit later. In the meantime, take a listen. Increasing your milk, cheese and yogurt intake can decrease your risk of a hip fracture in old age by 46%. I love my Aussie dairy and at 77 my life is full to the brim. Here's the circuit. Let's zoom in for a closer look. On the left is a one transistor crystal oscillator using a Pierce configuration. It uses a 20 MHz crystal and a simple NPN transistor. Something like a BC548 or 2N3904 would be okay. Now there's no filtering here so the output is rich in harmonics. That means that not only will there be a signal on 20 MHz but also going all the way up like 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140 and 160 megahertz and even higher. In this case we're interested in 140. Anyway we've got another part of the circuitry here. We have an incoming signal coming in through the antenna I'm using a long wire as an antenna, that's why I've only got a small capacitor of 10 picofarad and it's applied across the junction of these 200 microhenry coils. These are just RF chokes and they look like fat resistors but with wire around them instead. It's very fine. In parallel with that is a variable capacitor so you've got a tuned circuit in the AM broadcast band. Now, you might not be able to tune all of the AM broadcast band with this arrangement, but you can change these values if you want to get other frequencies. Anyway, we've got the incoming signal coming on AM at around 1 MHz. We have a very dirty harmonic rich signal coming through from this oscillator. One of those signals is 140 MHz. And we have a 1N4148 diode here that is used to mix the two RF signals. And we have right here a tuned circuit. Now in parallel with this coil, which I'll show you in a moment later on, is a trimmer capacitor, a beehive trimmer capacitor that you just have to set. I'll demonstrate that as well. Anyway. The difference here is 140 megahertz, and a bow thing will tune down to 140 megahertz. So, if you set the bow thing to around 141 megahertz, then you have the station at 1 megahertz combining with 
a 140 megahertz signal through here to be giving a difference of 141 megahertz. And if you tune your bell thing to that frequency or slightly off to the one side, even if it's an AM signal coming in, you will be able to resolve it. It's a little bit critical, but you can certainly do it, especially if you adjust some of these. Some of the wires are a bit long, but I have built this and it does work. This is the crystal oscillator. I've put a couple of capacitors in series here. That was required to get the crystal to exactly 20 megahertz. If I didn't have the capacitors, the frequency would be a bit low. The idea is that you want the seventh harmonic to be pretty close to 140 megahertz. Then that helps you with the dial reading accuracy on the bow thing. Anyway, this is the crystal oscillator stage, which I'll just show you closely. And then the signal is coupled into our tuned circuit for the front end. This red wire here is the antenna connection. I'm just going into my outdoor HF antenna. Here's the variable capacitor. And these resonate on the incoming signal. Then there's our little diode here. Now, most important, I'll just give you a better look. This is about five or six centimeters of wire. It is a loop and it forms the output coil, which is where you take the output off and feed it into your bow thing. Now, if you wanted to, you could have a connection with the antenna removed and it going into the antenna socket, but just so that you don't need any connections. I just have this loop so you can put the rubber ducky antenna just inside it like that. Or even if you have it a few centimeters away, the signal coming out is enough. So that's okay as well. Now right here is a beehive trimmer capacitor. It doesn't matter if your trimmer doesn't look like this. A lot of newer ones are smaller. But it's got a maximum capacitance of around 25 picofarad. I've just attached a bit of tubing. You might just be able to see through to the top of it so that you can more easily adjust it by hand. Anyway, this resonates to about 141 megahertz. And you can adjust it and peak it and whatever. Ideally, you do have a trimmer. It can be a different size to this one. But if you don't, I have succeeded in hearing signals without the trimmer. There's still enough signal being picked up by the bell thing to be able to hear AM broadcast signals. Now this is a very simple arrangement. Let's say that there is a signal on 141 megahertz, then that would still be causing interference to your reception as there's no shielding, but in practice, there's unlikely to be any signals at 141 megahertz, so you should be fine. Thing is, this is very simple. No connections to the bow thing. Don't even need special antenna plugs or sockets. Just a very simple beginner project that you can have a lot of fun with. Here is the up converter in action. I'm tuned to an AM broadcast station. And, yep, you're hearing it coming out of a bow thing. you'll hear that it's fairly broad. It 
just like with my CW and SSB video, you should have the squelch off, mute set to zero, and be tuning in two and a half kilohertz segments. Even these steps may be too coarse, but you could always tune to the other side of a signal to resolve it better. In this case, you are listening across the signal, tuning across from low to high, and finding this best spot. It won't be quite at the center. As an example, you're tuning up at 140.685. We've just tuned down there, so we'll go in the other direction. We're going back up. It's distorted, not much audio. Less audio, but a bit less distorted. Now there's not much audio. Still not much going up. Tuned up and it's gone. There should be a middle spot where it's better. Now, you might find some interaction between the various controls. That's why, if you can, make sure you do have this trimmer there. And even the front end. It's funny, like right there, it's noisy. But you might want to tune either side. It's not quite a straightforward peak. Now that's a bit better. Now it's interesting that when you tune to a certain spot, and we're talking about the front end here, There's a spot here that it's about optimum. Now there's a bit of an effect here. Now I've got the coupling really tight. I'll just see what happens. I'll just move the coupling a little bit away. When the coupling is looser, there might be a more pronounced peak. move it a little bit closer. That was a bit better. That's interesting, there's another noisy bit here.
If you fiddle with these controls right, and remember you've got interaction between the front end, the back end, and the up and down buttons, the tuning buttons on the receiver, you can get quite good audio reproduction. We have another here. It's at seven seven four. We haven't peaked the front end for this second station yet. What about two bell things? Here we have two on slightly different frequencies and you're hearing two stations, one from each. Now I've got it set on a local station but a bit weaker on 1179. I've also got this nano VNA on 1179, or quite close. If I put it near, there's an interesting beat note. This is because the Nano VNA is very close, but not quite on the broadcast station's frequency. It's possibly like maybe a Hertz off, given that beat. If I set it a kilohertz off, I've now got the Nano VNA on 1178. I get a one kilohertz tone beating with the radio station's carrier.
So what's it like? This is definitely not a DX performer. The selectivity is very poor. Definitely inferior to even a small pocket transistor radio. And it's a little bit tricky to adjust the tuning. But once you've got it, stations are quite listenable, especially if they're not far away. The stations you heard today in this demo were up to about 50 kilometers distant. If anyone asks you, can you receive AM broadcast radio on a Baofeng? You now know the answer. You can with this simple converter. Try it today and let me know the results you get in the comments below.